this guest webinar. I'm really excited because this is the very first time that we've had um, Ivan on New Energy Work. And as you're probably aware, he's one of the most active Shiatsu people out there at the moment, um, spreading the Shiatsu love, which is, of course, right on our wavelength, because that's exactly what we do here as well. So it's, thank you so much for joining us for this guest webinar. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining this uh, seminar online. I'm really thrilled in showing you what I can do with uh, this neck treatment. Yeah. And uh, before we start, I think Cliff has a few things to tell you. Yeah, I've got just a few intro slides. So this is obviously a guest webinar. Um, we have a whole guest webinar program, which is all free to access. We're going to do a couple of polls about you very quickly to find out how well you know um, Ivan and how well, how confident you are at assessing the neck. Um, we've got a little bit about um, Ivan himself, and I know you're very interested in the history of Shiatsu, um, Ivan, aren't you? You're very interested in it, so we're going to get a little bit of a background of that. And then we've got four videos for you. Actually, Ivan actually made seven videos. We couldn't put them all on one hour, and I've loaded them up already so you can access them later on. And, um, and then once we've watched the videos, if there's time, we'll do a quick Q&A. Okay, so here they are. This will be on our website. It'll be available to all the members, whether you're a free member, professional, or premium, and you will get a link in the replay email as well. Okay, so let's go straight on and find out a little bit about you. Let's see how many, um, let's just see how many people know Ivan already. So do you know him? Let's share that poll and see. And the question is, and the answers are, have you studied with him in person? Have you studied with him online? Or not yes, this is the first time. And we'll just get an idea. Wow, look at that. Look at that. We've got 83% oh, have not met you before. There we are. So it's a whole new showcase for you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so now uh, one of the things I was really impressed by was a systematic way of assessing the neck for contraindication, something I'd never seen before. Um, so I just wanted to know whether you've got your own methods for doing that. How confident are you at assessing the neck for possible contraindications? I'm going to run that poll now and we'll see. Okay, and look at the answers coming in. You've got a very good audience there because over half feel unconfident or very unconfident. So mm -hmm. definitely something that we need to know more about. Okay, a little bit about Ivan, uh, director of Ryoho Shiatsu. Check it out. Just check out the links on the email that comes with the um, uh, with the replay. Direct link into his whole scene. He's got an amazing scene there. And I don't know what my French pronunciation is like, but you're on the board of the Union Francophone des Professionnels de Shiatsu Therapeutique, <laughs> which means they're very important. I know that. <laughs> and also, you're obviously a very active international teacher, and it's great to have you. And look at this list of people. This is very interesting, by the way, because these are definitely styles of Shiatsu that are not um, that well known within the new energy work sphere. You know what I mean? Most of our practitioners are from the sort of Zen Shiatsu. Um, sort of things, Pauline Sasaki's and Shiatsu kind of thing. So it's really exciting to make those connections um, and to really start connecting up um, as a whole Shiatsu scene. Love it. Okay, so now it is over to you. I'm going to um, run your slides and let's just hope they're at the right place. They are. Yeah, so over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Cliff. Um, hello, everybody. So I hope you are enjoying, <clears throat> sorry, this moment. First thing I have to tell you is first um, I will uh, apologize for my bad English because I'm uh, not an English na native speaker. I'm doing my best. So I hope you will understand me uh, all, during all this uh, session. And then I'm also, among many things I'm doing in Shiatsu, I'm also passionate of, about history. I'm uh, at the head of this uh, group on Facebook named History of Shiatsu Group. And it's now joined by more than 250 people. Uh, I, I mean, 2,500. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, we are slowly able to understand how this uh, Shiatsu history has been created, who was doing what at, at what moment. So it's not completely clear now, but uh, we are progressing. It's already been two years now we are working on it. So first thing I want to... Uh, introduced to you, if you don't know him, of course, he's here on the picture, is Tempeki Tamai, who is the founder of a name Shiatsu, not the technique in itself, because all the 
uh, first uh, practitioner of shiatsu were all anma shi in fact so practitioner of anma but at one point anma was so uh, in, i mean not popular at all in japan so we decided to change several times the name it's a, it's, it's a kind of a new greenwashing finding a new name and here we go again mm -hmm. so shiatsu is this history and you see on the corner down there, the first book ever about Shiatsu named Shiatsu Ho, mm -hmm. meaning method of Shiatsu. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Next slide is, um, uh, let's talk about this man in particular, because the, the Dr. Aruchiki Hirata was a very important person in the history of Shiatsu. He was not a practitioner himself. He was just a very clever man, uh, super interesting in Western medicine, so he started to do study at the university, and at the same time he figured out that uh, his uh, mother has been cured with just moxibustion. So he said, "Oh, moxa are super interesting. I want to learn more." And finally, when he was only um, just a young student, he started to create a group around him and say, "Okay, I want to um, to work with some doctors, some students, in order to improve this all." technique about uh, oriental medicine. What you can see here is all the book he wrote. In, you have just to imagine he was just a student, so no degree, nothing. And when he published his very first book, it was sold um, like a million of uh, samples in, in a month. Wow. Yeah, the, the printer had to reprint the book 40 times in just one month. So it's, it's crazy. He had a huge influence around him uh, at that period. Uh, as you see in the 30s, in the 40s. So what uh, you can see also is the inventor of um, this um, skin line. So there, this is one of the things you will see in different schools, especially uh, Koho, Shiatsu, Igaku. So the technique he created, so oh, by the way, he was fired from the uni university before getting a degree, so he's not a, no official doctor. But anyway, he, has, he had a huge influence on Japan at this period, and he created Koho Igaku, meaning imperial medicine, or yeah. old-style medicine. And it's, for me, sorry, um, um, if Billy Rusticha is here, he will correct me, because he's the one knowing all these things. Uh, next uh, slide. Okay. Now you will see someone very interesting is uh, Ryuho Okuyama. So he's a martial artist. And this man is a fundamental, if you want to understand the really beginning of the Shiatsu schools in, as we know them. I mean, uh, this is very interesting. So he was doing some, uh, as you see, kind of jujutsu, but also he uh, produced a few books. And he was really also interesting in caring about people, not just destroying them. So he, he knew about that. So he said, oh, well, maybe I can learn more. So he met this famous doctor Irata, and that's how he was trained in shiatsu mm -hmm. and he started with acupressure at that time he was the name was not shiatsu it was hapakuho and here you see there is a house down there this is the very first clinic of the history and usually uh, this clinic you you can read on it it's named hapakuho meaning pressure technique that's it wow just pressure technique and you know what in, uh, he, he was, it was in Hokkaido Island, so the, the northern one. And he created this clinic not alone, but with someone you know. Next slide, you will see Namikoshi, Tokujiro Namikoshi. So they worked 10 years together. 10 years together. Imagine the uh, amount of time in order to mix the knowledge, the influences. And one was clearly at one point they decided to split. One was clearly, uh, I mean, Namikoshi, uh, more interesting in connecting with the Western world, especially with physiotherapy and so on, and um, forgetting all this meridian stuff. And uh, Okuyama was more traditionalist in all sense of ways, you can imagine, politically, uh, uh, as, a, as a human being also. <laughs> and it was really interesting in keeping this knowledge of uh, meridian. So they split at, after 10 years of, of work. All right, so the whole meridian thing goes back a long way then. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's yeah. A very interesting to go. So I, here it's a very short uh, resume, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, no, that's fascinating though, yeah. really interesting. 
And then you, this uh, Namikoshi, you can see the son here under the small uh, picture is Toru Namikoshi, his son who died in a car accident too oh. early, uh, unfortunately. But this man has been uh, sent in the US. In fact, the two of them were, were doing a tour in the US. And at one point they met the founder of Chiropraxy. And the oh. father told his son, you have to stay here and learn the Chiropraxy for three years. And then you come back to Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a very important influence. We will see all the influences uh, at the end here. Now, last last uh, important person, if you don't mind, to show us, of course, is Shizuto Masunaga. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, or if you imagine, the previous two ones were uh, very early in the century. Uh, mm -hmm. One is born in nineteen uh, in. Uh, 1901 and the second one 1905 something like that mm. and here it's uh, so when uh, Masunaga is opening his own uh, school Yokai uh, Shiatsu school it's completely different it's 30 or 40 years later and so we can say that the first one Okuyama is a traditionalist in the, in the way he's keeping all the Chinese meridians mm. uh, uh, Namikoshi was a modern guy indeed and they say no no I want to to go uh, very um, uh, to, to, to fit with uh, uh, American standard because, of course, this uh, Japan was uh, occupied by the American army at one point. And then Masunaga is a kind of neo-traditionalist man in saying, wow, well, well, let's take it again, all this meridian, but I will add my own creation, my extension meridian. So this is super interesting. And all of them, as you know, have published some books. And at one point, I, I hope they will all be uh, translated. It's mm. uh, super important. So let's see now what are the influences because every time we are talking about Shiatsu, we say, oh, this is the, this is it or that. But from martial arts uh, lineage, of course, before um, creating this martial arts Shiatsu, uh, martial Shiatsu, is, we used to a lot the point, you know, to harm the people or put them in KO or even kill them. So this is a crucial technique. So hurting the points. Um, Kwatsu is the resuscitation techniques, so it's completely the opposite. Ah. Um, and yeah. finally, bonsai. Yeah, making people well, making them come back again. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. And, uh, and bone setting was part of, of, of the traditional uh, technique, of course. When you are doing martial arts, sometimes you can injure yourself or mm. someone is injury, injuring you, and so you have to fix it. Yeah. So it's all about this. From uh, Anma, uh, because it's the roots of Shiatsu, it's Anma, we have acupressure, of course. We know that. Vibration, strikes, stretching, and much more. And the whole oriental medicine, because it used to be a very medical massage, in fact. And the last thing was bandages and braces. So again, like bone setting, it's all combined, you know, in order to fix the people. So this master was really good at that. If you, you were alone in the countryside and you met an uh, machine, you can say, oh, my shoulder is aching. So click, clack, and then you have a bandage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And of course, the energetic point uh, uh, of uh, the energetic uh, techniques, uh, connections, and uh, mm. it's, uh, all the things we are using now. And from the Western world, from uh, especially from this Namikoshi school and now uh, uh, other schools uh, like Kuretake, I'm thinking about them, they are really good also. Uh, anatomy and physiology is a big part of the study. If you go to Japan, I say I will, at least a third of the study is uh, about that. And then pathologies, of course, and Western massage, physiotherapy, and chiropractic. Mm -hmm. So all of this combined is making what we call Shiatsu today. Mm. So why I wanted to show that to everybody tonight is in order to understand what I'm doing. I'm not doing just the only the acupressure thing mm. uh, on, on points or without points. It's just uh, um, it's more, much more than that. So you will see different techniques today, and some of them are clearly coming from physiotherapy. Mm. But we'll just do, do you some nice surprise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. That's really and. That's a fantastic introduction. And of course, if you're interested in more information, you can always check out um, his uh, um, Ivan's website. And it's just amazing. You definitely want to get involved in that whole scene. It's absolutely amazing. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. We've got four videos for you. So I'm going to play them and then maybe we just have a few comments afterwards. And then if we can get through them, um, then we can uh, have a Q&A at the end. OK, I think you're going to find them very interesting. 
So what the best thing to do, Ivan, is if we go off the stage so there's no feedback and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to just kick us both off um, and myself off. And the video will play in a moment. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my private uh, practice here in Sarajevo. Uh, let me introduce you, Ibro, who is going to assist me today. And uh, well, welcome to my place. So basically, what we are going to see now is uh, different uh, tests. Because you know what we, when we start to manipulate in Shiatsu, especially the neck, which is quite a sensitive area, it could be harmful. So we have to, before, to do some tests to be sure that nothing bad is uh, going to happen during the treatment. And also to detect if you have all injuries in the, in the neck region. That's one thing. But before that, we need to know a little bit about the anatomy of the neck. Especially because usually the people who are doing shiatsu, they are learning that at school a long time ago and sometimes they forget. There is too much to know about the neck, so we will do it very quickly. I'm asking Ibro if you can turn and look around. So in order to see that here, what we have is a proper neck, okay? So first thing is uh, the C1, C2, the cervical one and two, they are really at the basic, uh, uh, the basis of the skull here, and you cannot manipulate them directly. They are really uh, inside or just behind the, the skull. So it's a bit complicated to touch them or do something properly. And then the whole cervicals are going down to the C7, C7 in here. And this one, you can find it when someone is bending and you see this bump here. This is C7, okay? So here, this is what we call, we call in Chinese Ta Jui, so the big one, the big cervical, okay? And, um, well, that's it for the bones. What you are feeling under your thumb, under your finger here, are the um, process uh, of the spine, and you have the lateral processes of the spine also on the side, on both sides. So that's uh, could be some kind of markers for you to know where your fingers are when you are treating. So this is it for C7, and then um, you have plenty of muscles here in the neck uh, area. So when you do a neck treatment, you have to know at least a little bit about anatomy. Uh, one of the big, big muscles here is trapezius going on the side, on the shoulders, in the middle of the back here. And also, it's connected with even the deltoids on the side. So there is plenty of connections. When he's showing also his head like this, you can see here this big muscle touching the collarbone. And this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And you add more on that. You have a scalene, you have a semi-spinalis, uh, you have uh, uh, splenius, uh, you have plenty of muscles, so you have to know them before doing nonsense, okay? This is quite important. So first thing I'm going to do now is a little bit of the most test I was talking about, because you have to detect if there is old injuries on, on the neck. So the first one we are going to do here, I'm going to turn around, and just consider that the head is a buzzer, you know, like in a TV game. So first you put your both hands at the summit of the skull, of the, of the head here. And now what I'm going to do is just to press suddenly. So it's this. You do a compression, and this compression, you will, it will show you if the person starts to scream. Well, it's not good. It's not a good sign, obviously, okay? So again, here. That's it. Okay, what does that mean? It means that maybe one of the vertebras is broken as a, some kind of failure. So please do not manipulate with the head and send it to a doctor to make it right. If you want to know precisely on which side you have this problem, you can bend a little bit the, the head. Always put your hand on, on the summit of the head and just press again. Here, no sign. A little bit here, and again, 
Okay, he's not screaming of pain. That's a good sign. So we can do the next one. And now what I'm going to do is just to hold the head and stretch it like this. Okay, no sign of pain again. So here is perfect to detect if there is um, a whiplash, you know, after a car accident, uh, it happens a lot. And so here, no pain, we are good for now. <laughs> for now, because we have two more tests to do. One of them it could be uh, an interesting one to see if there is a, let's say, a, a cervical uh, brachial um, plexus, sorry, cervical brachial plexus um, compression. So what I'm asking him to do is just to put his hand on the side like this. No, 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 just like that, right? And put his head on the opposite side, okay? And now what I want you is to look inside your palm. Okay, is it painful? No. no. Maybe we can even do more about like raising the arm or whatever, but it's enough. This test is enough. Of course, you do the other side also. So here, here it goes, completely on the side first, and then try to look into your palm. Okay. A little bit. Okay, where exactly? Uh, yeah. So you see, this is super important information, but it's not screaming out of pain. So um, it's, it's okay, it's still okay. We can still do something for him. I think it's just a slight adjustment to do. And the last one is to put his head completely here and on the side like that. And you wait for a few seconds and do you see any kind of black spots in your vision? No, is it okay? So perfect, come back. All right? Do you feel any vertigos? No. no, okay. The other side, please. Here and here. And you wait a little bit. So it's one way to test it. There is different ways, but it's super important. The other way you can do also is to take the pulse here in order to figure out if there is still some blood circulating in the radial vein here, arteria. And uh, it's uh, also super important. Yeah, I can feel the blood. So it's all good. There is no uh, artery compression uh, in the neck. So all those tests are important. If the last test is uh, negative, you have to send him again to a doctor in order to do a Doppler. Okay? So this is what you need to know, and um, before doing all these shapes through movements, you never know, so it's better to be cautious. Thank you. How about that? Let's get uh, Ivan back on the stage here. I'm going to invite him back onto the stage. So wasn't that interesting? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so for me, it's important to understand what we are doing, and I don't understand why in Shiatsu sometimes we don't learn all these techniques coming from, mm -hmm. obviously, physiotherapy or chiropraxy in order to avoid critic, uh, I mean, first critics, that we are yeah. not complete professional, yeah. and secondly, that um, we can really do some damage to some person if you don't do all this thing. So it's, um, it's quite important for me to be able to understand what's going on first before doing manipulation of a, of a neck, you know? Yeah. And, and we love to do that in Shetsu. So. <laughs> <laughs> so do you actually, you wouldn't do that on everyone. Presumably it come, if someone comes in with a neck problem, then, then you do all those tests, right? Well, not everyone, if, uh, indeed, because if, if, well, first the person is, is not complaining about the neck, well, mm. you don't need that. No. Then secondly, if the person uh, never mentioned, even if you're asking um, some specific question about the neck, did you have any car accident or injury on your neck and so on, on the cervicals, whatever, and they say, no, 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 well, you don't need to do that, of course. No. Okay, yeah. you I, first. I'm, I'm always trusting my, my my clients, my patients. So that's yeah. the way I'm, I'm working. But sometimes, sometimes I've been able to uh, figure out that uh, something was mm, not completely nice, yeah. and I say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to touch here, and I want you to go to see a doctor, do X-ray or whatever. Yes. Uh, 
yeah, you, you, you can do, even if we are not uh, official medical uh, staff, we can ask for people to go to see their doctor. That's absolutely, yes. Yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got another video coming up now. Some more stuff on the neck. Um, this is video two out of seven, um, and it goes like this. So now what we are going to do is some uh, movements, you know, it could be useful for diagnostic, but also uh, very good ones for exercise, both exercise you can give to your clients in the end of the session. So let's go through all of them. It's always useful to see it uh, one more time. So let me introduce you Atif now, uh, he's my new assistant for this video. And uh, we, what we are going to do is very, very basic movements. So, First one, I want you to go down like this and backward. Well, yes, slowly, slowly. So when uh, someone is doing this exercise, you should uh, always notice the sounds in the legs, you know, some cracks, some uh, sand um, sounds in it. So the second one is to turn on, on the right, on the left, rotation, no problem. And then you have lateral movements like this on the side. Okay, so immediately, first question is Do you feel any pain when you're doing those movements? No. I do, I do uh, hear some sand. Some I sand in, in, in the neck, so it's back. Okay, good. That's an important information also. And we'll try with treatment to fix this little sounds. Uh, next one you can do is a circular movement like this. So it's always good for warm up, of course, and the opposite direction. Very good. Okay, what I want you to do now, at if is the chicken movement. So usually what we do is to put a finger on the chin, on the shin, in order just to do properly this exercise. So he's pushing his shin in front and back is doing this movement. So what we have here is a translation, which is very good for C1, C2, by the way. And the other one you can do is, is the tortoise. So the tortoise, no, no, just going out of a shell like this, yes. Okay, so it's a larger movement and it's super interesting also for uh, mobilizing all the cervicals. And of course, you can do the other tortoise exercise, so going out of a shield and looking around, out of a shield and looking around in one direction and the, on the other one. Perfect. You can do more. You, you can do also diagonals. So you're going to put your look here down there, looking at the spectral and going up at the opposite direction. So. It's also, also very good to do this. And on the other way also. So every time you change, you know, uh, the movements, you are solicitating different kind of muscle when you're doing this. And maybe one of these directions is a bit painful or is stuck and the person will tell it to you. Okay, this is it for now. What we can do also, is now to use both movements, especially the free first one, in order just to know what's going on, okay? So I'm going to ask the camera to close, uh, to come closer, and um, what we are going to do is the first one. So first movement, when it's bending, is you want the shin to touch the chest, okay? If he's not able to do that, well, we will try to do something for him, and then, when it's going backward here, what you want is that the throat is straight. That's a good sign also. He is able to go back. Otherwise, he is going to complain about pain in the rear of the neck. The next exercise is rotation. So on one way or another one. If you want to compare both sides, what you can do is to be here in the middle of the collarbone and put fingers. So here, as you can see, is more or less three fingers away from the middle line of his shoulder. Let's see it on the other side. And here, it's only two fingers. So there is a difference here between left and right. So yeah, 
It's a good information also to know. Thank you. And the next one is lateral. So here, come here, and you're going to put your fingers above here, the ear, and in the middle of also of the shoulder. Here is three fingers. On the other side, it's also three fingers. So it's, this one is good. So now what I know is here on the rotation, this one is pretty good. This one is not as good as the previous one. You knock that down because it will help you to focus on these problems. Okay. Thank you very much for everyone's posting some questions in. We'll get um, Ivan back on this uh, back on the stage here, and uh, here we go. I'm going to get him back on, and we've got some questions from him already. Hey. Yes. Hello. Yeah, so we've got some questions. Here we go. Um, so we've got this one from Jane. I'm going to flag it up so everyone can see it. Um, I'd feel concerned to press, this is from the first video, I'd feel concerned to press the top of the head. How gently and cautiously do you press, or is it quite firmly? That's in the test. I think they're worried about you going, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite impressive at the beginning. I, I didn't dare to do that also. So the thing is, uh, yeah, you have to press, to push a bit hard, you know, to create a compression of, of the cervicals. So yeah. it's not that hard. I mean, you're not jumping on the head, obviously, yeah. but <laughs> no, you don't break anything. But just in order to create, you know, this compression and to make the pain uh, surge out and the, the, maybe the person complaining about that, which is good information. Uh, so that's one thing. And the next thing, is, it will be also for the stretching like this when we do this movement. Yeah. It's the same, just you don't need to pop up the, the head out of the body, you know. <laughs> it's just it's just gently do the stretching and, and see what is the reaction. At the minute, at the second you have a complaint, up oh, immediately you release your pressure. All right, okay, so that's it, yeah. 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 What's your experience using it? Is, have you found it very useful in yourself? Yeah, as I said just before, it happens to me quite, um, not a lot, but sometimes I've been able to detect some problems. Yeah. And, and you know what, the, the person are a bit surprised, they, I have um, pain in my neck and you're not treating me. I say, yeah, but I prefer to be cautious. And uh, please go to do some x-ray. And when the person was coming back, she yeah. told me, wow, that was a good, that was a good idea because in fact, everything is, it's a mess inside. And I, 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 I the, the, the doctor said that you should not, Manipulate, so I say. Right, wow, there you go. The proof, yeah. it's the proof, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Um, here we go. Here's Danny. Uh, in the first video, what will the press on the head at an angle tell you specifically? You know, the one where you put it on Yeah, 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 like this yeah. or that. Okay. Um, Don't need to go first. Uh, yeah, it says, if it hurts on one side, do we stop there and send them to the doctor, is what she asked you. Yeah. Uh, well, you can at least try both sides. There is no, you know, specific danger here. No. The pain is there, and but you, if you do that, you don't need to go completely on the side. This is too much. You just say, okay, maybe I don't know. I, I'm not good in maths, but uh, or in geometry, but just this is enough. You know, yeah. just this little movement. So the, the important point is always to be sure you are at the top of the of the head. So if I'm going on the side. The top is here, is uh, sorry, here. Yes, uh, I see, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, so you just adapt yourself, but it's good to try it before with some friends or colleagues, yes. before doing doing it live, you know, uh, <laughs> that's always better to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. and test it. Okay, let's watch, I've got a couple of questions, but I'm going to wait until we've seen another video because I think they might be answered by the actual video themselves. But let's see, we've got, now we've got video six of seven. So we're going to jump a few of them. Some of them, the ones that we're jumping, we don't have time for, but they are already loaded up on New Energy Works. So if you want to check in. Just, just, just before you launch it, uh, I mm -hmm. want to tell everybody that uh, there is one video you will be able to see um, at, at, at when you want to have uh, this replay. Mm -hmm. So one video is an extra one for <clears throat> the basic uh, supine position treatment. Oh. Great. Uh, the next one is going to be the <clears throat> side position treatment. Yeah. And the one we are going to see now is uh, the seated position treatment. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they can check them out later. So here we go. Here we are. Video six. Let's go. What we are going to do is the seated position. 
which is always very good to do in Shiatsu, especially for neck treatment. So first thing we are going to do is to start with a gentle massage again, but powerful. Let's stretch all the muscle one more time. One, two, three. You can even stretch this trapezius here. One, two, three. It's always nice to receive. One, two, three. You can do plenty on the shoulders, of course, but that's not the topic for today. And what I want you to, you to do is to do pressure again all along the suboccipital line here. So it's easy. Ah, yes, one thing, when you maintain the head, don't do that. Okay, it's not nice to receive, okay, not on the eyes. So just put your hand like this, okay, flat. And now we can do all the points. So let's start by this one, and one pressure here, a second here, a third one there. Or if you prefer, you start from the outside, one, two, three, and then the middle one, four. My position here is not good, okay? It's not good. Why? Because I'm doing that on purpose for you to see with the camera. But if I was supposed to do it properly, I have to change my side. So now I'm aligned with my thumb, my body. Now I can really push with a strong uh, force here. A real strength. One, two, three, four. Okay, you got it? So be sure to be on the right side when you are doing this in order to align your body in the direction where you are do, uh, doing the pressure. That's super important. Thank you. So for the camera, oh, I'm changing the side. Okay. <laughs> the next thing you're going to do here, you can again do the three lines if you want, especially the rear one is always good, the side one is good, uh, but the front one is a bit difficult here. So let's just do the rear one. It's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. You can also do the shoulder. If you want to do some pressure here, it's good. So here, you know this point in Japanese name, Kensei, is the dwell of the shoulder. It's good to do some pressure on gallbladder 21, but why don't we use the, the elbow? It's always nice to do some massage here and pressure with the tip of your elbow. So the bone here is going to be right on the point. And just relax and do some, put some weight on it. And rotation. So with your wrist. And I'm showing it on one side for the camera again. Of course, you can do it on the other side. Everything I'm showing, you have to do it on both sides. That's no good. Let's do it again. So here, your bladder 21, relax your wrist and your fingers. Put some weight. One, two, and the third time you are going to just do some rotation here. That's easy for you as a, as a practitioner. For him to receive, it could be quite uh, intense sometimes. Right? And then this massage, everybody knows this massage. In fact, it's always good to receive, so it do, uh, it's a kind of wellness massage. What I want you to do is more shiatsu. So we are going to press on urinary bladder um, 11 and 12. You know, 11 and 12 is super nice to do always here, okay? And you can add a 13 also, okay? So 11, 12, 13, all those points are connected with the lungs. And it's very good also for the muscles because those muscles are first connected with trapezius, connected with the neck. And also, it's uh, uh, in, in relation with C7 we have talked about. Here. 
three, and we go a little bit down. And then now I'm going to do some rotation of the head. So let me, I have no choice for this one. I have to go on the right side. I hope you will be able to see. So I'm holding the neck like this, and my hand, my palm is going to be flat on the neck. The next one is here. And you do a rotation from the index to the thumb. One, two, and three. So what is super important here is that your hand is very flat and su supporting the head. It should not be soft. It should be hard. So this part is hard. And the person, when he's doing this rotation, on your fingers can feel it like they are piece of wood. It's, the, the sensation is this one. One, two, three. And now for the fourth one, my term is ready to receive a person. You do a pressure here. One, release, two, release, and three. Okay. So those three points are the three ones we have done many times already. It's this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so one is very close by to the region uh, of the gallbladder 12, which is here, if we are below it. This is gallbladder 20, and this is urinary bladder 10. Okay, so here, again, one more time, we do this movement, and thanks to the movement, my thumb is able, let's see with a different angle to the camera here. And one, and two, you go deep inside to relax and activate the nervous system here. Please, after that, do a small massage because it's quite intense. This technique is quite intense. So just do it this way after it, okay? And of course, you are going to repeat the technique on the other side. Can you move around? And the next technique is the one we have done as a test at the beginning to see if there is a whiplash. Okay, of course, there is no whiplash here. So what you are going to do is to put both terms here under the head and put it backward a little bit in order to really uh, hold the head like this. And what I'm going to do is to push up this uh, head. So first I want the athlete to breathe in. And when he's breathing in, you push up and pull, uh, pull out. I mean, <laughs> breathe out, sorry. Breathe out and release. Let's do it again. Breathe in, up, breathe out, maintain and relax. Okay, one more time. One, two, okay. So when he's breathing out, as you seen, the shoulders are going down. So you have a super nice stretching here on the cervicals when he's breathing out. So that's why you have to maintain. So it needs a little bit of muscles, but it's okay. It's not hard to do that. The second one is the same, but with a rotation. So I'm going to ask Atif to breathe in and to exhale on a long time. So again, same position for the both term. And exhale, 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 and relax. I'm going to do it on this other side. So just here, breathe in. One, breathe out, out. Out, 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 out. <sighs> so this is a long stretching plus rotation, which is really good also to receive, and you can feel the difference. So go in front of the camera, please. And let's see, you remember that he had, just sit, thank you. He, he struggled a little bit on this movement. So on that side, he was able to go very far. Now. So two fingers, even just one finger to the shoulder line, middle line. And now let's see here, and it's two fingers. So we have a, a 
improvement here of the situation. Uh, you remember the first time he was all at three, three fingers. So it's better. That we've already got quite a few questions. Let's get um, here. He comes. Hey, there we go. Excellent. It, it was just reminding me that stretch. Some of the stretches remind me of the things you can do in the supine position. You know, mm -hmm. you, can, you know. And especially in, in the Hawashi um, school, you can do that also with a tenugi. So to to have a longer arm of uh, for pulling the head, you can really do some very strong technique if you want. Also, but you have to study with him or, or his son because it's quite peculiar techniques. Yeah. What is it? What do you have? You, you, just, what do you, you use the tenugi, you know, the Japanese uh, little scarf. Yeah, the cloth. And, yeah. and then you put that under the neck and you pull with this. It's, it's super nice to do it. Yeah. OK. Um, I've got Laura. Mate, I'm just going to adopt some of these questions. Laura just made a comment, actually, mm -hmm. about the. I think it was that technique that you did, which was which you did, you know, because you've got so much martial art training, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> but she said she would do it. Um, she would um, support it on her knee or a hip, you know, to mm -hmm. support the arm. So, mm -hmm. so that's quite normal. It completely depends on your own strength and the size of your hands, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is from earlier. Anne asks, "What about?" And I think she means scoliosis here. A person with scoliosis. Yeah, that's yeah. the kind of thing you have to know before starting the treatment. If yeah. you have a scoliosis on, on on the cervicals or of a part of the body, you should not do uh, any stupid thing and really think about what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, and I recommend first you do a classic uh, shiatsu treatment, uh, not too hard and with a lot of uh, energetic points and meridian stuff sure. in order to be sure. And then you ask for more details from the doctor. And then you, you after that, you will know what to do if you can go on or not. Yes, exactly. Okay, we've got one more video and I really want to get it in. So we've got a few more questions coming, but let's watch the last video. No, no, just one second. Excuse me, Cliff. There is a very interesting comment. Amazing, <laughs> but isn't it closer to chiropractic from uh, treatment than shiatsu? It's exactly what I say at the beginning with the historical part, uh, yeah. dear Veronique, uh, if you hear me. And then mm -hmm. uh, it's, as I said, shiatsu is a mix of so many different influences. So this is clearly coming from uh, chiropractic in, in our, our physiotherapy, but it's part of shiatsu influences. If you go to the uh, Namikoshi or Kuritake school, you, you would see a lot of stuff like this. It's not, uh, you know, it's not, there is no surprise. And it's, if you go to Japan, you will see that the techniques mostly, uh, because 90% of the practitioners are coming from Namikoshi school. So they are doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So let's uh, share some material, the last video, and which is video seven, and then we'll go back to the question. So here we go. Hello. Uh, now what we are going to do is a different kind of movements with some uh, tensions in the arm in order to go further in the stretching, in the movements of the neck. So it's this are uh, coming from physiotherapy, but as I explained, uh, the in Western influences of Shiatsu it can work perfectly for us. So um, I'm going to show you upper limb tension test, ULTT. The first one I'm going to do is just to put his arm at an angle of 90 degrees here. Okay. Then here, the palm is facing his head and I'm going to ask him to go to the opposite side. So is it painful? No, no it's okay. Come back. We can add more tension by putting his hand like this. And again. All right. And then now, yes. What he can do is to go on the left and on the right. When he's going to the right side, he's moving his hand. So this is going to help the tension of the muscle, but also activating the nervous system in order to improve the movement. If by doing this movement, thank you, do it on the opposite side. And when he's doing this movement, if you hear some cracks in the uh, neck, it's okay. It means you are releasing tension uh, between the cervicals. So this is the first ULTT. And I'm showing it again for you because you are in front of your uh, computer now. So first one is the head is straight, the, face, uh, the palm is facing the head. So he's testing if it's painful here, painful there. And 
if you can feel some pain, it immediately say on which side. This is important, okay? And after, it's more tension by doing this on the other side and it's moving, okay? You got it? The next one is a bit different. So now, we just let go the arm down and is stretching the fingers here, okay? And um, what can do, so this is, there is two options, we will see both options. So this is what we call posterior rotation. So let's put the fingers backward, in fact, backward. And again, he's putting, putting his head on the side. Is it painful? No. no. And now you can go left and right, and at the same time, up, he's moving his wrist like this. Uh-huh, I heard some crack in the, in, the, in the leg. Okay, the next one would be the opposite. So it means anterior rotation, and the finger are going backward again, on the side, opposite side always. Okay, still okay. Now you're moving your head from left to right. So those exercises are coming from neurodynamic, and it helps to really release tension and activate the nervous system with uh, this, the, between the, of course, the brain and um, the, the arm, and of course, the neck in the middle and the shoulder. So the last one will be this one again. So we have two options. If we want to add more tension, it could be this one, or could be like doing a, a, a duck face, like, yes, joining here, the thumb and the index, all right? And he, again, he's going to put his head on the side. No, no, don't go for now. It's different. It's the same. It's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Left and right. So he one and two. One and open your finger like this. Yes. One, two. One. Two. So you see, this is very simple exercise, but it's really helpful sometimes when, in the end of the shadow treatment, you say, "Ow, oh, I." don't have the, uh, the results I wanted at the beginning. So maybe you can improve the situation again and give that as an exercise to do at home. Let's do it on the other side. So just to repeat, the first one, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? Palm facing head, going to the opposite side, testing, okay? And then moving left, right, left, the second one, relax your shoulder, relax, and you do posterior. The fingers are um, showing the wall behind me. And now, again, and left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, perfect. The next one will be the uh, opposite rotation. And let's put the finger back again. So you have ten muscular tension all along, activating different ner nerves in the arm, putting the head aside, and then again, here we go. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. And the last one, <clears throat> what I call the duck on the side. So it's a funny one every time. The Students love that one. And now, left, right, yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Adif. All right, so what I do usually, as you've seen, is to mix different kind of techniques in order to go further, to use, of course, acupressure, to use massage, uh, which is usually considered, uh, considered as a shiatsu technique. But you can improve that and uh, looking uh, what the physiotherapists are doing also. And you can do also some other techniques. This is enough, I think, for today. And I thank you very much for uh, being with me in my uh, practice here in Sarajevo. Bye-bye. I was doing them. I was doing the exercises. It's amazing how, how the neck feels so different. I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. I hope everybody try uh, in front of the of the screen. Yeah. Doing this movement and uh, try. I, know, I was doing it. I was. I was doing. Yeah, that. yeah. It's it's funny <laughs> exercise. You know, it's quite well known if you 
go through uh, YouTube, you will find uh, some uh, physio physiotherapist explaining the movement, and especially the, which uh, nerve is uh, activated, if it's the radial one, unial, or me median uh, one. You, you have plenty of explanation, so it's, it's good also to, to do that. But it's really, I'm doing that quite often in order to just unlock my neck. You know, some if I, I feel a bit tense, I'm doing this exercise every time it's working. There you go. So, as I said just before, you will have extra videos with the classic shiatsu, supine treatment, and side treatment. So don't, yeah. but those are uh, a bit specific, and Cliff really enjoyed that. So okay. he, he told me, let's show this. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, there was so much material. I just decided because I know, I guess I, I'm, I know the typical new energy work audience. Mm -hmm. and those are the ones I thought that, that you, they would find the most interesting. Okay, here's a question for you from Mark, which is, what about emotional trauma? Because he, he had this, yep. uh, whip, he had emotional trauma and uh, a whiplash, and he had it treated by an osteopath. But then he had severe burning chest, but burning pain in the chest that lasted mm -hmm. eight, hour, eight hours. I guess the question is, you know, how do you integrate the emotional side with the physical there? Well, it happens to me quite a lot, in fact, to have a lot of emotion, especially on the neck, because it's quite a very delicate part of the body mm -hmm. uh, and sensitive to, and there is a lot of um, accident that can happen. Um, so I remember once a, a young Spanish lady, when I was working in Brussels, came to me and she was like that. Uh -huh. And they say, can you help me? I said, wow, oh my God, maybe it's better to see an osteopath, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, finally she told me, no, no, I, I have no, no injuries, no nothing. So I did the test in order to be sure. And then after we tried to first relax the muscle and do gently the movement and then add this uh, ULTT uh, exercise. It mm -hmm. was better, but in the end she told me it's emotional. It's emotional because when I was a kid, my father used to, grab me, grab my neck and say, you're stupid and bum, bumping the head on the, on the table like this. It, it was bad. So she, she told me I, I, I run away from Spain in order to uh, run away from my father, but I'm still stuck. So can you do something? Wow. So at that moment, I say, yeah, I can do a few things to, you know, in order to help you. And then I use this Tenugi techniques I was talking a, a sooner. Um, and it, it happened that she was straight in the end. But you have to really understand what's going on here. Yeah. And then you have to say to the person, that oh, she was crying a lot, of course. Of course. And then you have to say, OK, you have to come now again and again because we have to get rid of these traumas. And that's a different thing. But first, yeah. the complaint was about the, 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 the pain. So you have to treat the pain. Yeah, of course. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Um, we've only got two minutes left and how about this uh um uh, this is kind of out maybe slightly out sally wonders how you treat the atlas yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm not a chiropractor so i i'm not doing it the only way i'm doing it is to this is a technique you are you don't have here but yeah. again the two terms behind are on the uh, let's say on, on kidney uh, no 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 kidney sorry sorry about no. my bad no. oh, on bladder yeah <laughs> Yeah. And and then what you do is to hold, maintain the head like this, but very light, uh, with a light pressure. And then you just, you are behind the person, okay? And and just wait. At one point, the, the, there is a movement coming. And then you follow. It's more, very close by Seiki techniques, in fact. And okay. then when, when it starts to move, you just follow the head movement. And at one point, the body knows how to fix itself. So wow. you will have some huge cracks. It happens to me a lot. I've, I've done that yesterday, in fact. And, and, and it's, it's fantastic because you are just, okay, just letting the, the head, maybe you're just pushing a bit further, but very gently and suddenly clack and it's done. <laughs> so it, it's a soft technique. Yeah, absolutely. No, no manipulation, no, no, no twisting, nothing. Okay, well, we've come to the end of our hour. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with us. Thank you so much. What a great connection we've got here. This is absolutely... Thank you so much for inviting yeah. me. Honestly, uh, uh, thank you for putting in so much work. You've created so much material. It's been a real pleasure working with you. And let's just finish up with this question, which is, Vion, where can you learn this technique in depth? You've got... A well, to any Japanese schools, in fact. Uh, you, you have to go to uh, the one I, I, uh, I was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Namikoshi and Kuretake, but it's also, especially the light touch and movement, more than about Seiki. Mm -hmm. Things are also coming from uh, 
um, different things. And if you if you are more a martial artist, you just go to see what is a martial shiatsu. It's quite effective. It's very uh, it's a bit strong, but it's very effective. And uh, of course, uh, Zen Shiatsu, Yokai Shiatsu is super nice to do all the connection and gentle movement to follow what you have to follow, especially to get rid of the uh, trauma and the emotion. It's fantastic. So all kind of Shiatsu That's don't true. stay stuck on only one style, but learn yeah. all the styles. That's my message. And, and that's a great message to go out with. Well done. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay. I, I just want to say just a small hello because this is very a very rare occasion to say hello to my Shetsu students in Malawi. Hello, Malawi. guys. I hope you are all here. It's been months and years I didn't saw you, so I'm, I hope you're good. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, we've got all the links to your uh, websites on the, um, on the email that's going to go out with the replay. So... Anyone who wants to find out more, just follow this guy. He's absolutely awesome. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. And goodbye to everyone. And if you look in the chat, you'll probably see lots of hearts going flying past, mm -hmm. which you've got. And you nearly broke a record. We had almost 200 people live. And you, you're pretty much right up there. And it's been a great pleasure. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good evening. Merci les Français. Bonne soirée. Et à bientôt.